Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Kitchen Design Experts. This is the channel that tells you all you need to know about kitchens, about bedrooms and about home offices. So, so far we've told you about flat pack mass produced kitchens. And we've told you about rigid mass produced kitchens. And today we're going to speak about what you can expect and what you can expect to pay from a custom made designer kitchen and or a bespoke kitchen. Wow. So if you've not seen any of our previous videos on mass produced kitchens, we'll leave a link up at the top here. And if you don't want to miss any of our future exciting presentations, make sure you hit that notification bell. Now then, let's break down the terms custom made designer and let's start with custom made. Now many kitchen companies will use this term custom made but in our opinion, unless you can have a unit made to an exact size, whether that be height, width or depth, it's not custom made. And it simply won't do if they're saying that their fitter will just use a jigsaw on site to make the depth of the unit half that depth. It's also not good enough if say you wanted to get your run of oven housings etc underneath a low beam just to cut the plinth down at the bottom. What we mean by custom made is having a unit specifically made to a specific size in the factory and then deliver to site as such. And what you find is good quality designers, this is their dream really, this is why they tend to gravitate towards these kinds of kitchens. Most custom made kitchen companies will have a set range of sizes and then those sizes can be customised to any size you want. But when you have something customised to a special size, it's going to cost you more money. So it's important that the set range is big enough and has enough options for you so you don't have to have too much of your kitchen customised. And luckily most custom made kitchen companies do have a very large range, especially compared to their mass produced competitors, of which you can see, I know we brought this out before, but this is what you can expect from a mass produced kitchen, is all the list of the range on two pages say. Not a lot. However, if you look at the manual for a custom made range of kitchens, on every single page here, are lists and lists of cupboards and all of those cupboards can be made to special sizes if you want and also what you might find is that within their set range there are various heights of cupboards depths of cupboards and widths of cupboards as standard if you look at these drawings this is a german company and you can see the various heights and depths that can be achieved as standard in this range they even have three heights of units available and I'm not talking about varying the plinth height. The actual cupboard height is available at 720mm, which is standard for most kitchen companies, but also 780 high and 845 high. This will give you so much extra cupboard space that you won't believe it. And then if you couple that with varying plinth heights, you can fine tune your worktop height to the exact position. Now you can also see the various depths available as standard. When you consider that even the drawer units can be made to all these various depths. Just imagine the storage space in a drawer unit that's 1200 millimetres wide, 660 millimetres deep and 845 millimetres high. So now you fully understand the term custom made. So now let's add the designer part to that and see where we end up. Now most people who sell kitchens will say that they are selling a designer kitchen and I suppose as they are designing your kitchen Maybe that's true. So what do we mean when we say designer? Uh, I think it's the level of individuality that you can incorporate into a kitchen design that not only makes that design work, but look better too. Now let's have a look at some designer kitchens. Yes, we've mentioned that they generally have a huge colour choice, but pink, really? Move on. If you look at the darker worktop at the end of the peninsula, they can actually move back onto the top or be pulled out as a bar. Notice how the open shelves on the left match the colour of the worktops. And have you spotted the pink shelves on the back wall that highlight the door colour? Now here's another, shall we say, less garish kitchen. Again, coordinated colours. The tabletop there in the foreground matches the wall cupboards in the background. And under those wall cupboards, there's integrated lighting that fits flush into the bottom of the cabinet itself. This kitchen shows you how to use an overall neutral effect with wood grain and add highlight with orange on the island. 
Those coloured open shelves are backlit. The worktop matches the colour of the doors, and if you look at the wall cladding, you can include an in integrated accessory rail. Now here, you can see a better example of wall cladding with the accessory rail. Now there's numerous accessories you can attach to this, from iPad holders to illuminated herb gardens. You can also see on the right hand side, as it changes into the sitting area, how the units transform into a softer appearance with the inclusion of complementary glass and open shelf units. These are just some of the ways that you can individualise these kitchens to suit your taste and personality. The only limit is the imagination of your designer. Now I think you can possibly already see the benefits of this type of kitchen when you compare it against the mass-produced kitchens. So what is the payoff? Well, the clue is in that first word, pay. You'll certainly pay more for this sort of kitchen. You will. So let's bring up that graphic that we've seen in previous videos. Now remember that these suggested costs don't include for any appliances and, and they don't include for installation. And also we presume that the worktops are laminate worktops and not a specialist surface such as quartz or granite. As you can see we're suggesting that these types of kitchens could range from 8,000 to 25,000. Yes that's a huge range and that doesn't usually relate to actual quality. That may surprise you but when you get to this level of kitchen the quality of the cabinets is consistently high. So, why such a difference? Yes. Okay, so why the difference? Well, it's all down to your design, really. We've already mentioned that there's a huge set range of cupboards, but within that range, there are also some specialist cupboards. What's a specialist cupboard? Well, by way of an example, I'm going to talk about pocket doors. What's a pocket door? I hear you say. Here's a video explaining. So basically, they're full height doors that can fold back into the side of the housing and they can hide any appliance or unit that's incorporated actually in the room. Just watch this. If this were to just be a normal run of units without the pocket doors in them, your kitchen could cost considerably less. In fact, adding those pocket doors could add anything up to £4,000 to your kitchen. And what you will find that in these, range, these types of ranges, there are far more choice of these uh, specialist units. Anything from the Arise and Fall mixer unit to a, a sliding tambour shutter, even a built-in computer station if you really want. Yeah, that, that explains why there is such a variance in the cost of these custom-made designer kitchens. It just depends how your kitchen is actually designed and what level of individuality that you are prepared to invest in. There are though, as with other products such as motor cars or fashion, some kitchen companies that have a certain kudos linked to their name. Now if you want this, you will pay more and that doesn't necessarily mean you're getting better quality or design, it just means you're paying for a name. This is why we feel it's always worth getting more than one kitchen quote in, just to make sure you are in fact comparing apples to apples. Or pairs with pairs. Or, or pairs with pairs. Now obviously most people would always prefer to have a custom-made designer kitchen than a mass-produced product. But yes, budgets do come into play. But perhaps you could consider just toning down the amount of specialist units and just homing in on the ones that are important to you. Because this way you might just find that a custom-made designer kitchen doesn't cost that much more than the top end of the mass-produced market. Right then, that's enough on custom-made designer kitchens. Let's move on now to bespoke kitchens, the Rolls Royce of the kitchen market. Let's just reintroduce that graphic again. 20,000 to 60,000 is what we're suggesting. Actually, that top figure can go considerably higher if you want. It depends on how far you want to go, and generally, there are no boundaries. Okay, now, everything that we've said about custom-made kitchens applies to bespoke kitchens, plus much, much more. However, they only cover a very small proportion of the market because of the cost. So we're not going to linger too long on this subject, as it's not of that much interest to too many people. However, with these bespoke kitchens, you will definitely get a unique kitchen, if that's what you're after. You can get anything from a uh, retro 50s style to a Scandi style. You can even have it themed around your favourite movie if you want to. Imagine having a kitchen themed after The Godfather. Lord of the Rings. Oh, Lord of the Rings. Okay, they will use many different materials. So if you're into stainless steel or pewter or leather, 
You can have your kitchen made of materials that you want and they'll weave them into your design. Now there will be a host of colours and styles but none of them will be set. This kitchen is built from the ground up. There'll be a team of draftsmen working with cabinet makers, working with the designer to create a work of art just for you. So if your thing is having, I don't know, a, a mouse carved onto the legs of your units, or you can even have a crest of arms carved into the, each and every door, then this is the kind of thing for you. Game of Thrones crest of arms. Game of Thrones crest of arms. <laughs> Lord of the Rings crest of arms. Okay. But if you're actually prepared to spend this amount of money on your kitchen, just make sure it genuinely is a bespoke kitchen. Lots of people do try and pass things off as things they're not. Now, as we pointed out in our previous videos, there is a distinctive difference between, say, a, a flat pack mass-produced kitchen, a rigid mass-produced kitchen, and a custom-made designer kitchen. And the same applies to a bespoke kitchen. So test the metal. Show them a picture of a piece of furniture, whether it be a, a Bauhaus workstation or a 50 steam cocktail piece of furniture, and ask them to make it. If the answer is yes, then we'll get your checkbook out. Right then, so hopefully you should have a fantastic insight now into the different types of kitchens and how much they're all likely to cost you. So you shouldn't now be overpaying for whatever it is you're buying. So in our next video in this series, we'll be presuming that you now have narrowed down your search to be actually off visiting different showrooms. Wow. We'll be letting you know what to look for in those showrooms and then how to choose out of those showrooms the three or two kitchen companies that have come around to see you. So if you don't want to miss that, you know exactly what to do. Bing! Right then, if you've got any questions at all about kitchen design or appliances or anything at all related to kitchens, please put your questions in the comments box below. We promise we'll get back to you. Now it's goodbye from him. And it's goodbye from Greg. Bye-bye. See ya. A few words spent to do that. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the little notification bell. Bing. Now then. <laughs> Rise and fall. Mix of units. Gerda. Gerda. Uh, who wrote Rise and Fall? Gibbons. Gibbons. Not Gerda. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it. Going back there. Yeah.